but I don't want to ever, 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 never make her again, ever. Hello, I'm back. I still sound sick, but I'm better. I'm definitely better. I do sound like I smoke a lot of cigarettes, but I do smoke less cigarettes than what I sounded like last week smoking cigarettes. It's better. I'm just still kind of congested a little bit, but definitely so much better. Also, we when you think about my new shirt, I got this last year to wear for fall Halloween and I hadn't worn it yet. And then I put it on today and I thought, oh my, do y'all see where the dots are on this? Do y'all, do y'all notice where they're at? That was a surprise. I didn't think that the tie dye line would be right there, right here, but I'm going to keep wearing it because it's mostly all girls on this channel. We can be supportive and sympathize in a situation where you have an unfortunate fashion experience, which is this. I really like it other than, than that part. It's great. Thank y'all all so much for the sweet notes, checking on me, being sick. It was rough. My son got COVID, my daughter had a cold, I caught my daughter's cold. We were fortunately able to keep my mom from catching any illness. She is just fine. My son got over it pretty fast. He had a pretty mild case, but then y'all, what really took us down besides me getting it was my husband got it. Have any of y'all dealt with a man cold? Anybody? That's rough, guys. The man cold, it is hard on the household. When Zach has a runny nose, things just crumble around here. I was having to use a nebulizer to help me breathe, but his nose was dripping and driving him crazy and he kept sneezing and it was much worse. He was definitely experiencing more pain than I was having trouble breathing. I think those of us who have seen the man cold in action understand the depths of that illness. It is atrocious. I tried to do all I could to keep him from catching the plague here in the home, but I failed. Of all my failures, that one I really regret. I really, really regret that failure. He's doing fine now. He still is having a runny nose, but it's not as bad as the runny nose of last week. Last week's runny nose also involved a sneeze and he felt it in his chest and it was bad. Thankfully, it's just the runny nose this week. We can all breathe a sigh of relief. So breathe deeply with me. He's better. Thank you, Jesus. Zach is on the mend. In the time while I was gone, I went ahead and I finished up the last two stools. I was going to do a video of me working on them, but it just was not coming out right. And I was still sick doing it and I sounded and I looked horrible and I'm a perfectionist. I am on medication, but sometimes it's just not enough, especially if I'm sick. It's not enough of that. I was like, I can't put this out there on the internet. I can't. I can't do it. So I'm just going to show you the finished pieces and you're just going to imagine what it took for me to make those. Okay? They did come out cute and I really do like them, but you're not going to see me make them. I think you'll be fine though. I think y'all know how this goes, right? You do. Y'all are smart people. Y'all know how sewing on pieces goes. Y'all have this down. That's what I did for days was sewing on pieces. So I was going to show you those and all this other stuff I've been making for the past two months that you haven't seen. I haven't posted most of these things, so y'all don't know about these things that I've been making in the background since July. It's been a while since y'all have seen my makes that aren't related to stools or zombie cows. But I have made other things. Are they weird? Of course they are. I don't make anything that isn't. That's just my MO. Before I show you all the weird things I've made, let me show you the final two stools. And if you're new to my channel, I have bought five crocheted stools from Amazon. If you are interested in buying one of these stools, I'll put a link for them down below. I have decorated each stool in a different way and I am now gonna get ready to auction four of them off 
for you, the subscribers, to buy, and one will be going to a charity dinner for All Blind Children of Texas, which is a charity my parents started for blind and visually impaired children in the state of Texas. These stools were decorated using the flowers that my subscribers sent in, and there were over 200 that were sent in. I did not make any of the flowers that you have seen in any of my other stools. Those were all made by y'all, my subscribers, and then I've just taken them and gone with a weird theme for every stool, and today I am showing you the last two stools. So let's go through all the stools. There's the sunflower stool, there's the Dia de los Muertos stool with Lupe and the girls, then there is Myrtle the turtle, and today you're going to see the last two. Now, we've kind of done an amigurumi, we've done a simple kind of basic home one, and then we've done dead people one. And today we are doing food. It's a two layer strawberry cake with vanilla buttercream frosting, my very favorite. I love buttercream frosting above all frostings. And I would consider myself a picky frosting eater. I have expectations. Do not whip my frosting. I want to feel the sugar on my tongue. Don't whip that stuff up. I want it to be palpable. I don't want it just whipped to where all I feel is grease on my lips. I don't like that. I want to feel sugar crystals. I'm imagining this as one of my own homemade strawberry cakes with vanilla buttercream frosting because y'all I make a mean strawberry cake. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's one of my son's favorite things and boy it's good. It's real good. But I digress. This is a strawberry cake and I decorated it with all your pretty flowers again. And then I took some of the smaller flowers and these are, were actually individual flowers and I stacked them on top of each other, sewed them together and then sewed them on. And then of course, it's not real good buttercream unless it's fallen out the sides. So my buttercream has squished out the sides. Just imagine taking your finger and licking that right on up. That's what I've been imagining because I love frosting and I have been really craving cakes so bad while I've been sick because you know nothing tastes right nothing tastes good except I think frosting would I think frosting would taste amaze balls I really do and I'm trying my darndest not just to make a bowl of frosting and eat it because I've done that but I'm not gonna do it I'm not I'm just gonna imagine I've had my frosting and it's with yarn on a stool that somebody's gonna put their feet on. Now the last stool, I was originally going to make it an ocean theme. I'd actually crocheted this huge clamshell and then you were gonna be able to open it up and there were gonna be flowers inside and there was gonna be a pearl and then there was gonna be seaweed and all this little scene around the sides. It was gonna be amazing. But then I got sick and I came to my senses and I thought, you know what? That's so much work that I don't want to do. I, I don't wanna do all of that stuff. So I said, self, you don't have to. Nobody knows your idea, so you don't have to tell them about it and get it done. So I didn't. Surprise, it's not done. I didn't do that. I went with a different idea. It's more, I guess, kind of abstract. Now this one is not completely finished. I still have one thing I am making to put on here, but I really like this one. My daughter says this one is her favorite. That's saying something, right? When a almost 10 year old says that your style is kind of neat. That's cool. Here is stool number five. So this one is kind of abstracty, like I said. I started with the bright pinks and mauves and some reds, and then going across, it goes into blues, and then over here, it goes into purples. I have not added leaves to this one. I don't think I'm going to add leaves to this one. I want it to be more of the flowers, but I am making a butterfly to put on this one, and it's gonna be kind of monarch colors. Here is the beginnings of the butterfly wings. I think it's gonna be really pretty with this. I still might change it up a little bit, but I'm having a hard time reading the pattern because I'm doing it off of my phone because I'm too lazy to go downstairs to get my iPad. Also, it's probably dead, so it actually needs to be charged and then me bring it up here and then work off of it. It is a whole ordeal, and all I'm saying is I can't see the pattern to do this correctly, so this is wrong, but these are the colors. That's all I was gonna tell you. And that's why it's not finished, just because I was trying to get it done for the video, but I can't see the pattern that I have on my phone because it's so 
tiny. I need my iPad and I'm too lazy to get it and charge it. There's gonna be a butterfly that's gonna go here and that's gonna be all for this story. It's gonna be the simplest one of them all. I really like all the bright colors on here and how it kind of swirls. I really like that because, you know, I'm very artistic. I really like artistic -y things like that. That sounds really, um, you know, I'm not that conceited. A little bit conceited. This is the drugs. The drugs we're talking right now. I, I sound more conceited on medication. Does that make sense? Is that a plausible response? I don't know. Once again, I'm on medication. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Now all of the stools are done, so I will be getting things ready for the auction. That will probably be starting sometime this next week because the charity dinner is September 19th. Be looking for it here on my YouTube community tab and on my Instagram slash Facebook. Instagram and Facebook are connected. I'm really bad at both of them, but I tried to do good, but I really don't do really well at either one, but I try to. So if you see a post, congratulate me because I did that. That's a big step. But I will definitely be posting about the auction and the details and how that will all work. I will cover shipping if you decide to buy something. So you will just be buying the stool and I will cover shipping to get to you. And this can be international. Now let me show you the other things I've been making since July and probably late June, because I think I started all of my stool stuff around that time, and so you've been having stool videos and not those videos. But I've been making a lot of things, and around the beginning of July is when we had Hurricane Barrel here. I was really in a strange place at that time. I was obsessing over making this one thing, and I made four of them and I thought I was gonna die at the end of it. There was actually one more I was gonna make, but I thought, you know what? This is plenty, this is enough. If y'all see me sweating, it's cause I'm sweating. It's really hot in here. And also I am dressed for fall. It is still around 87 degrees outside here in Texas. It's what our falls usually look like. Between 75 and 95 degrees is fall here in Texas. It's still hot. And when you're going through the change, it's still real, real hot. If you see me glisten, it's because I'm sweating. And I'm going to be honest with you. I have a fan on in here, but is it enough? No. No, because I'd rather be in a walk-in freezer at a restaurant. I really think I'd be happy in one of those. I, I know they don't get a lot of oxygen, but the temperature would be just right. The first little things I made are these octopuses. And these I actually did put on my Instagram. These guys were really fun to work up. They are by Fainy Toys. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. F-A-Y-N-I Toys. And she has all kinds of neat kind of skull things. There's, I think I saw her have a skull head and then it looks like there's brains inside, but they're actually coasters. They're really cute if you're into that kind of stuff. I like that little bit of touch of spook without being bloody. So I thought those were really cute. Of the octopus patterns I've done, this was definitely my favorite because an octopus is a lot of work. These little tentacles, they're a lot of work. This one has a little star right here. And this one, I have some little rhinestone things that I glued on here because this one I actually made for my husband because he was in the Navy and an octopus is kind of like a Navy symbol of something or something, and he chose these colors, this black and gold. This is gonna go to his office, and I decided to put the sparkle on his to irritate him, because I know he doesn't really like sparkle, but I thought, you know what, Zach? You need sparkle. So I gave him sparkle, and he's gonna have to take this to work, and people are gonna ask him about the sparkle, and I'm gonna be interested to see what his response is, because I, I wanted him to sparkle. And its name is Sailor, because my husband was in the Navy. He was a sailor. And this one is inky because octopuses, they be inky. I think she's so cute, but she has got sparkle yarn. I love this yarn. It's actually a rainbow color changing yarn because if you can tell here at the bottom, her tentacles are getting 
a lighter orange. I'm pretty sure this was an I love this cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby. I really did love this cotton, especially because it had sparkle. It had my name written all over it. And it's got a little eye right here. And these are actually a set of safety eyes that are for dragons. But I thought, you know, octopuses have that weird eye on the front of their face. This would be perfect in a starfish stuck to its head. So that's what I put there. Weird. I know. This, I'm gonna be honest, this pattern was my very least favorite. And part of it is because this is a very long, tedious, technical pattern. It seemed to never end. And I started making it right before the hurricane hit, when we still had power. This octopus's name is Beryl, or B.O. for short, because we all had B.O. because we didn't have power and everybody be stinky. You could take a shower, but it was very cold water. Or I guess we could say bow, but no, it's B.O. This is B.O. because I struggled with this pattern. It's very well done. It is just a very technical pattern. There's videos to go along with it. This one is by Off the Beaten Hook. It's a really great pattern. She does a really good job, but these tentacles, they were miserable. There are so many passes up and down these things, and she actually wanted you to work in, I think, the back bump on some of these, and I eventually just said, no, I'm not working in that back bump no more because I will kill myself. I, the thought was very close. I was gonna go and throw myself out into the hurricane because if I had to find that back bump one more time to go into, I was literally going crazy. This one was not my favorite. She came out really pretty, but I don't wanna ever, 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 never make her again, ever. I love her little headdress and she's extra. If I had made her first, I would have never made any other ones, but she was like third. So I had to keep going. I had one more pattern that I'd bought and I was bound and determined to make that sucker. And I did, and it ended up being one of my very favorites. This is Wendy, the Wattapus. Her name rhymes with mine, but she's a Wattapus, a watermelon octopus. It also sounds like that James Bond 007 movie. I'm not gonna say the name, but I could say the name because it's not a bad word. You can add those last two letters to the end of Wattapus and make it that if you wanted to. Wendy is more dignified and classy. She didn't want to be a Wattapus in those last two letters. She just wanted to be a Wattapus. And so she is, and I love her. I made this a whole lot harder than it needed to be because I did the spots in one color and then I did the little peachy pink and this lighter green and the darker green. I made this real hard. It didn't need to be this hard. The pattern doesn't look like this. The pattern is just two colors. You have the underside and then the top. The actual pattern is very easy. I made it not that way though. I made her a bow because she's a wattapus and she is extra. So she has a watermelon bow to match her undersides because all octopuses should have that, right? And this pattern is from Jody's Yarn, and I really loved it, and I love the eyelids on the eyes. I'm really big into that right now. Eyelids just do something for me. I don't know, they add so much like sad or mournful or sarcastic character to my creations, and I like that. I like sarcasm and just pitifulness in my toys. Anybody else like that? You know, sometimes our toys can't always be joyful. Sometimes they are full of disdain because of how you made them look. For instance, me making this one look like a watermelon and the fact that I hate watermelon, but she looks like one and she's my favorite. She is a walking oxymoron watapus. I'm gonna stop again and put her to the side. That was my slide obsession over the summer, was making octopuses out the wazoo. I got that out of my system though. I don't want to make those any more ever again. I'm done. I still had time to make another blanket. I have reached my goal for the year of making two blankets this year because I made my ocean blanket that is ocean without getting sand in your crevasses. And this is my Christmas blanket. Now you're gonna say that these aren't Christmas colors, but they're my Christmas colors here in my craft room. These are the colors that I decorate my room in. So yes, 
they are too. This is a V-stitch blanket from Daisy Cottage Designs. It's not like a regular V-stitch blanket. It's an extended V-stitch, I believe. I really enjoyed making this. After I made B.O. Octopus and Wendy the Waterpus, I needed some downtime. I needed some monotonous, non-thinking crochet, and this was that because this was a very easy pattern. I really enjoyed doing it, and now the border I made up because this is actually a moss stitch, but I mossed it wrong. Because I knew I was already doing it wrong, I just kept doing it wrong all the way around, so nobody really knows how wrong it is because the whole thing is wrong. I still got the unique look that I wanted, and I really do like this blanket. I was running out of yarn towards the end, so I didn't get to make it as big as I wanted to make it. I think I was so hot during the hurricane, I just kept thinking about Christmas, and that's why I ended up making this blanket, is because I really needed to think of cold things because it was so hot. It was too hot to swim here. Our pool temperature was like swimming in boiling water. It was, I think, like 97 degrees. Y'all, that's hot in a pool. That's not refreshing. I made this to think of snow in winter time that doesn't really happen here in my area. Making a blanket for thinking about that time while I was already hot truly made sense. It didn't, but I'm saying it did because I, I needed some monotony and this just made me think of winter. The next thing I made is getting ready for another holiday and that is Halloween because I'm fixing to change out my background. So I wanted to go ahead and show you some of the things I've made. I've posted a couple of things on my Instagram, but I haven't posted everything. This I made at the same time I was working on Wilford Watermooger. It is a little bat and I've made it a candy corn bat and it has albinism, and that means it doesn't have any pigment in its skin and probably has a visual impairment. And that's where I come in, a teacher for blind and visually impaired kids. I assume bats work the same way. If this little guy needs some braille instruction, I'm there for it. I can take care of him. This pattern is by Sasaru Designs, and this is Bartholomew Batster. Like Baxter, but Batster because it's a bat and it's Bartholomew syllables. Bartholomew. That has a good ring and I can just holler for Bartholomew and he'll come, supposedly. He'll be hanging around back here. The next thing I made is this pumpkin and it is a greeny striped pumpkin. I love the look of the greeny stitch and this did not have squares for me to sew together double win. This one works up really fast, and this is actually a color-changing yarn from Hirschner's, my first Hirschner's purchase. I got a lot of Halloween yarns. This was the first thing I made, and it's got sparkle in it. I don't know if you can see that, but this is the candy corn version. The color changes are very subtle, so it doesn't give you kind of that broken look like some color-changing yarns can do and I really liked that. And this pattern is from Stitch Sister Co. In this pattern set, you get a large pumpkin, a small pumpkin, and a mini pumpkin, I believe. But the nice thing is, is she tells you how to do your color changes. So when you do wanna do a striped one, because I'm gonna make some of these for my kids' teachers, I'm gonna make them a little goodie basket for fall. And these work up so fast, they'll be perfect for these little gift baskets. Now, my next things that I made are from my new order of my yarn art jeans, which y'all, I really do like this yarn. It really is very nice. And one of y'all, I'm sorry, I don't remember who, told me that there is an XL or a plus, which is a larger size than this DK. I'm gonna be looking for that next because I really do like this yarn. It's really wonderful to work with. I made this little pumpkin and this little pumpkin. This is Quigley and this is, I'm gonna let y'all guess, Peter. This is Peter Pumpkins because Peter's on a stack of pumpkins and Quigley is just kind of weird looking with these little curls in his face. And these are by the same designer, Toys Met Lena Elena, I believe. I have another one of her patterns that I will be doing, but it's just gonna be a little bit more intensive, but I have another one that I'm gonna be working on for my background that I'm kind of excited to do, but it's gonna be a booger of one. These were a really easy, fast workup, and I love the detail that she did on the stems and the little tops here. So cute, and this is all one piece other than the little curls. The stem is crocheted 
into the top of this so you don't actually have to sew that on which I love and this is the last thing I've made and I really had a lot of fun making this one even the crazy details on it I actually really enjoyed and it is this pumpkin house and the actual pattern they are using a solid orange yarn but like I said I bought a lot of Hershner's Halloween yarn and I am really going hard into pink and ween this year and so I wanted to use this pinkish striped yarn for this guy. I bought that yarn knowing this needed to happen. This yarn is so cute because it has sparkles in it and then I used some of my sparkle yarn I already had and I made the little oak leaves and one of y'all who shall remain nameless picked up on the fact that these nuts are up here, the acorns. I tried to get a good shot of this when I posted my photos on Instagram but of course all you saw was it like this and it looked inappropriate. Shame on you, it's shame. But also my heart welled with pride that I have taught you so well that yeah, there's nuts up here. Could there not be? No, sillies. I have a little lantern here and it's got a little door with a bell and this weird little thing that it's hanging on. Mine turned out looking weirder than it's supposed to look. But this is a pipe cleaner that you kind of roll up and the bell was supposed to hang on there. And I wanted a smaller bell, but this was the smallest one I had. I used cardboard and made the little roof here above the door. And then the windows in the door are all felt. And I just sewed the details on there. And it's a whole lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. My goal is to make like a little village back there because I do have a... a a couple of other pumpkin house patterns that I'm going to be doing so there's probably going to be more back there in the background so if you are looking for some fun decorations to make you could make this in just about any color it'd be cute in turquoise or orange or even black I know some people just love the monochromatic kinds of colors for Halloween you could totally do that with this you could add the details or not I even thought about cutting some little ghosts out of the felt to put in the windows, but I was tired of dealing with the felt, so I didn't do that. I highly recommend this pattern if you are looking for an idea to try for your decorations. So cute. And this pattern is from Dora Gina Toys. And again, the patterns will all be linked down below for you to go and check out. Thank y'all so much for being so patient during the making of all the stools. Be sure and keep an eye out on my community tab and on Instagram and Facebook for when I post about the auction. I'll put all the information there about when the auction goes up and when it's ready and y'all can start the bidding. Thank y'all so much for being here today and I look forward to seeing you next time here on The Roomy Mill. Bye!